Hi, everyone. It's John at Rain King LLC. It's time for another GMU Extra, a series of short videos on a trading topic. This video will focus on controlling initial risk. So when we talk about controlling initial risk, there's really two components that we'll look at. One is placing our initial stop when we place the trade. The second is, and the question I get asked often is, when do you know when to move the initial stop up? Now, I will note that in this short video, I'll be discussing things from a position trader perspective, and I'll be sharing with you some very simple mathematical, mechanical rules um, based methods to keep things fairly objective. Now, whenever we take a trade, we really have three top priorities. The first is defending the downside. We want to make sure our initial stop loss controls our risk. The second is we want our next priority is to protect the break even line. And that's when we have to discuss and decide when do we actually move up the initial stop. And the third is protecting profits, which are at some sort of multiple of your initial risk. The profit taking discussion item three we'll discuss in a future video. So defending the downside. Let's go over a couple of very mechanical ways to control your initial risk. If you're a can slim trader, the very standard stop loss on a can slim position is a 7% stop on a full position. Fairly easy, you're probably all familiar with that. The second mechanical way is to sell one third of the position on a break of the low of the pivot day. And you would sell the other two thirds on a break of the low of the prior day. And we'll show that on a chart. The third is use your average loss to set a stop. So if you're a trader who typically experiences an average of four, five, four to five percent losses, you might want to make sure that your stop loss is going to be no more than 4.5 percent. And we can do that by staggering two stops. We can sell half at a three percent loss and then we'll set our second stop at six percent loss. So it averages out to 4.5 percent. Those of you that are swing traders and day traders, which we'll not cover in this particular update, will probably use other more aggressive and tighter techniques to control your risk, whether it's a day trade or swing trade. So let's look at our first example. Fairly straightforward, this is MongoDB from 2018. We have a cut base, the stock breaks out. As it breaks out, let's assume we buy 100 shares at $85 per share. So we set our stop using a simple can slim stop at 7%, at 7905. In this case, the stock barely got going and it reversed. And it actually, the very next day, it took out the 7% stop. Straightforward, typical can slim. Our second example looks at the second option for setting your stop loss. Here's Digital Ocean from March of 2023. We have a small consolidating base. We break out, we buy 100 shares at $38 per share. So in this case, we're gonna set a stop at one third of the position on the break of the pivot day low. So again, this is the pivot day as we may have the breakout. So that low, I've drawn this red line to demonstrate where that first stop would be. The second stop would be if we broke below the previous day's low. So there you can see right here on the chart. This is the prior day's low after the breakout day. So we use that low. If things get worse, we'll sell the rest of the position after we break the, the prior day. Our third example is looking at JD.com from November of 2019. We're gonna use the third rule here, which is using an average kind of a staggered stop loss at our average loss. Now that depends on what your average loss happens to be. We buy 100 shares at $33 per share on the breakout, and we've set our first stop at 3.5% loss. And you can see this stock came out of the gate. It looked like it was going to move, but then it reversed hard. And right here, we hit 32.01, 3% stop gets triggered. We sell half the position. The remaining half, we're using a stop loss at 6%. That doesn't get stopped out for almost five, six, seven days later but it does trigger. And so the second half of the position is taken out at 6% loss. So when you average the two together, we've taken a total loss in the position of 4.5%, 
which is consistent with our trading. Just as a demonstration, you can see if you had set a 7% stop loss, you would have lost a little more. So this particular staggering of stops can uh, get you out a little earlier. So let's move on to the next priority that we have, and that's protecting the break-even line and that all-important question of when do you move your stop up? So I'm gonna share with you a very mechanical way of doing this to try and keep it simple. So I'm using this black line as our entry point. So that represents break even of our trade and the green line is representing the fluctuation of a stock. So the rule that we're going to use mechanically is once our stock, if it gets out of the gate, once it rises 8%, we will move our stop up at that point. Now, if the stock keeps going up, once we hit the 15% profit level, we're gonna move the stop up again. So let's talk about what rule do we use to how far we move the stop. So again, when we buy $100 per share, our initial stop loss in this example is using staggered stops. So we have half at 3%, half at 6%. And that's this red line below break even. Again, once we get to 8%, our rule will be, we'll move the stop up to break even plus 1%. So in this example, once we've hit an 8% gain, the stock is at 108 and we are moving the stop up to 101. If the stock continues to rise and gets to the 15% level to a, a price of 115, we will move the stop up at that point to break even plus 3% or $103 per share. We do that because we wanna give the stock room to fluctuate naturally, but we also want to protect ourselves in case the stock completely rolls over and we don't want a good loss to actually, excuse me, a good gain to actually become a loss. So it's really going to protect us from that by gradually raising the stop in increments. So let's look at this in motion. Here's Excellus from May of this year. We come out of a base and we're going to buy this stock at the pivot, 136.38. In this case, we're going to set our initial stop at 7%. So you've got shown the red line there. So the stock, as it breaks out of the base, gets some follow through. And the stock on day two now is up 4.7% gain intraday. But we have not triggered the 8% rule. So therefore, we have to keep our initial stop loss. Now, the stock actually comes back down towards the pivot. And it's worth noting as I put down in the corner here, IBD's studies show that approximately 40% of all breakouts will return to the pivot area. So that's what Excellus did in this case. It came back down and kissed the pivot, but our stop loss is still down at a 7% stop. Now the stock does gap up the next day and the stock is actually has a gain now of 12.4%. So we've triggered, we're at least 8% above break even. So therefore, we're going to move our stop to break even plus 1%. Now, on the very next day, the stock follows through and actually moves up, and we have a 19.1% gain. So now we've triggered the 15% guide. So we'll move the stop up to break even plus 3% to protect ourselves. At this stage, after we've reached the 15% gain level, we would manage the position using a different set of sell rules to manage this trade. We'll talk a little bit about this when we get to the third part in a separate GMU uh, video, when we'll talk about how do you scale and protect profits. So here's another example using Rambus from November of 2022. We have a base. We're gonna buy out of that base at the pivot, which is 2875. And in this case, I've chosen an initial stop of 5% for the whole position. Now, in this case, the stock follows through strongly. It gaps up to close with a 14.3% gain. Therefore, we can move the stop up to break even plus 1%, which is 29.04. Now, the stock has an even further advance, and we actually now have a gain of 21% and change. So now it's time since we've triggered the 15% rise, we'll move the stop up to break even plus 3%, which is 29.61. And I've drawn that line in the chart. So you're moving your stop up incrementally as we've hit these guidelines. And again, once we're past 
we're going to use different rules to manage the trade. Now, in this particular stock, it forms another base. So I wanted to look at this base using our same rules with a clean entry, not assuming anything prior happened. So let's look at this base. Here we are with Rambus. It's now February of 2023. We have a base. It breaks out at a pivot of 40. So we buy at 40. In this case, we're going to have an initial stop um, of 5% which would be actually at 38. Sorry for the typo. Now, in this case, the stock moves up 8% intraday. So when that happens, we move our stop loss to break even plus 1%, which is $40.40. In this case, the stock immediately reverses the next four days and returns all the way down to the pivot area. And we get stopped out as the stock low at that day was 39.93, so we're stopped out in the position with a 1% gain. It's a mechanical way of, of setting this, raising your stop, but we happen to get stopped out. Now, again, you can see that the rule about coming back to the pivot happened again in this case, um, and we were stopped out. Now, I wanted to go over Upstart. This is from June of 2021. This one's a little tricky because it's a volatile stock. We form a very kind of sloppy base, but we buy the base at 160. Now, the stock the very next day has a really, really wild day. The stock is up 18% intraday. And in this case, I've moved the stop up to break even plus one and a half, even though it's gone up past the 15% rule. And I've done that because of the volatility of that stock. Now, you have to decide if you want to give the stock more room or not. It would be completely okay to say once it hits the 15% trigger to go with move the stop up to break even plus 3%. In this case, the stock actually during the day, intraday, came all the way back down and stopped us out at the 1% gain. All I can say in this situation is it's better to have a 1% gain than actually going into losses. Again, you had to be pretty nimble with this one because it moved very, very quickly. And again, you need to do, use your own discretion about how quickly and what level of stop do you raise it to. I used break even plus one because I knew I wanted to give the stock a little bit more room. But in this case, um, it even took out that stop. So now I wanted to talk a little bit about um, protecting break even using something that's more aggressive um, and a little less mechanical. It's more based on the price action of the stock. So in this case, we still have our diagram showing we're buying at 100 with the break even line. In this case, we're going to use natural reactions, the price action, to help guide us when to move the stock stop. So when the stock moves less than 8%, which is our other guide, let's say it moves up 4, 5, 6, 7% and forms a short-term high. And then it corrects and forms a little bit of a pullback, and then it recovers and moves to higher ground. Well, after we've had the initial reaction and we go to new highs, that is when we will move the stop up to break even. Now, this is more aggressive because we're moving our stop before the 8% guide. But sometimes the price action that comes back and hits a key moving average, a 10 day, a 21 day, and reverses and sets a high, telling us there's momentum behind the stock, then it might be appropriate if you're aggressive to move that stop immediately to break even to protect your, protect your position. So let's look at this in action. Here's HubSpot from last month, May 2023. The stock forms a small base, breaks out at 431.60. We set our initial stop loss. I think I used 5% in this level, which is represented by the red line. Now, this stock, the very next day, has a wide range. Intraday, it touches 468.88. So we're watching that. I'm going to watch the natural reaction. So this stock actually came back down and started to correct for a couple of days, and then it started back up. You'll notice that the reaction low was 436.55, almost back to the pivot, but not quite. So in this case, after we've had the reaction and the stock moves to a new high exceeding this previous short-term high, then we'll move the stop up to break even. So it's a more aggressive way of doing it because you haven't waited to the 8% trigger. So it's something I wanted to offer if you're a little bit more of an aggressive trader. So in this trading lesson on controlling initial risk, 
We've talked about how we defend the downside with our initial stop. And we've talked about our number two priority, protecting the break-even line, when to move up the stop. I hope this has been helpful. Part three, which will be a separate GMU video, will be how do we protect our profits and scale out of positions to give us upside, but also protect some of the profits. Thanks for joining me on this GMU Extra, and I hope you will join me again on the next one. Here's where you can find me on Twitter, YouTube, and email.